and welcome and welcome to episode 31 of Fracking Nightmare. As you can see tonight I'm not in the studio in Plymouth. This is no green screen behind me, this is the natural foliage alongside Walkington Heads just to the west of Beverley in East Yorkshire where I'm still at the Crawberry Hill well site here where uh, the protection community have effectively prevented Rathlin Energy from entering the site by building what has become known as Crawberry Castle. So we've been waiting for Rathlin Energy to serve eviction papers on the uh, protectors there but those papers haven't been served so one perhaps must conject that Rathlin have decided to concede for at least the time being the Crawberry Hill well site. Perhaps the reason being is that they're up against the time constraint and having served papers it may take another three days before a court hearing and then if the protectors are able to get a delay in the hearing to get uh, our um, a case together and even then if we lose the case of course it may go to appeal which might delay Rathlin well into August, September and maybe even beyond. So instead Rathlin have decided to focus their attention on a site about 12 miles to the east of Crawberry Hill at West Newton and we featured uh, West Newton on previous shows where we've shown the Humberside police pushing the protectors off the road having made it very clear that they are treating the protection community as pickets using trade union and labor relations legislation to force the protectors out of the way to allow the convoy through to the well site Humberside police having made it very clear that they're not going to entertain any suggestion that the protection community are here under the Human Rights Act and uh, consequently whilst they have the numerical superiority they will simply act as the corporate enforcers. Now on Wednesday of last week, that's Wednesday the 2nd of July, I got a phone call at around about uh, 8 o'clock in the morning to say that there was a lot of police activity on the roads over near West Newton. So I and one of my fellow protectors jumped in the car and we drove over to West Newton, arriving not as expected to a mass of local residents congregating around the entrance to Fosham Way, which is the road leading up to the well site, but instead to be greeted by about 20 or so Humberside police officers. I and my colleague were the only members of the protection community at the head of the road. Now I took the video, this uh, video was played out on uh, UK Column on Thursday and parts of it were played out on BBC Look North on uh, Thursday of last week. But I want to play that video out again because I want people to appreciate the magnitude of the traffic that will be descending upon their community. Now this is only the initial convoy and as you'll see the tape runs for the whole convoy coming in and I ask you to count those trucks. Count those trucks because this wasn't the full quota of the trucks coming in um, last Wednesday. This was only the first convoy. There was a second convoy that came in around about two and a half hours later. This was a very, very emotional day for some of the local residents. When they made their way down to the uh, well site, once the police had let them down that is, they were shocked by what they saw. And I'm not surprised. The full realisation of what this industry is bringing to their community was hitting home. Uh, remind me again Take a look at Commander this. Superintendent Downs. Superintendent Downs has decided that there will be no slow walking of the trucks. And we've made that clear right from day one. You know? so. so there's no uh, facilitation of peaceful process. What else do you want to do? To, uh, yeah, it's okay. We're just trying. I'm just trying to figure out the ground rules. Here, so. Oh yeah, it's fine. But like, like I've been saying every, every time we've been up there, I've been asking people, what is it that you want to do? Because we've said slow walking isn't an option. So we've said. What do you I want won't fall. There's a lot of nettles, nettles behind me, <laughs> and you've got short, short, short off. I appreciate your concern.
Do you realise what you've uh, just witnessed? Do you have any idea what you've just witnessed? A convoy. A convoy? Mm. Yeah. Do you know, have any idea what this industry is capable of doing? No. No? Perhaps you should educate yourself. Do you actually live in this area? I don't. Have you don't? But you live in Humberside, I'm assuming. No, I don't. No. You don't? So you don't really care what goes on down here, do you? It wouldn't take you very long to establish that this industry has effectively contaminated the water, the soil and the air in pretty much every location that it's ever been granted permission to unleash this abomination. And you're here facilitating a corporate agenda. No, I'm here as a police officer. No, you're not. You're not. Law. You're not here as a police officer. Yeah. You've made that very, very clear. You're here. You've got your earpiece in. While the earpiece is in, you're incapable of independent thought, and you are facilitating a corporate agenda. Well, I'm I'm here following lawful orders. I think you'll find, but um, and I'm sure if you check that up with Humside Police, they'll confirm that. Well, we have to. Uh, question what is lawful then. If a terrorist was contaminating the water supply, would that be lawful? But a corporation contaminating the water supply in one of the most sensitive aquifers in the country, and that's lawful. And you and your colleagues of Humberside Police are effectively facilitating that. Within a, within a generation, you won't recognize this landscape. It's actually very sad. What I'll just ask you to do is just ask to take tripod off the highway, please. I'm not blocking the highway at the well, moment. No, you try pods. Uh, if uh, any uh, vehicle so. comes along, I will move it. At the moment, it's not causing any kind right, of obstruction. I'm, I'm asking you because it is causing obstruction. It, it doesn't need to be a vehicle coming. What I'm saying is, I'm asking you to remove your tripod off the highway so that if a vehicle does come, it doesn't have to slow, does it? It's not having. It won't have to slow because I will move it. Right. I'm, asking, I'm asking you to remove your, remove your tripod from the highway. That's not unreasonable, is it? It's not unreasonable that I will move it as and when I need to. Well, I'm not going on that side. No, no, you're not. You're going to join with the friends out here. Yeah, yeah. You don't need that details. That's yeah. okay. No, you don't. You don't need them. No, we do. No, you don't. Hey, yeah. And you. Come on. I don't know who you are. You're best time well, here. your forward intelligence knows very well. I know who we are for many years. I'm not hiding anything. So I don't have to give details. I'm sure, yeah. Well, I'll see if Mark's got them. Yeah. Well, I'll see what, yeah. No, no, okay, not here, before, here we go. This is the West Newton site. It's the morning of uh, 2nd of July 2014. As you can see, the uh, police presence is uh, absolutely incredible. So we have the usual crew, evidence gatherers, inspector. Good morning, guys. I'm good. How are you doing? Wait, you're way out your area, aren't you? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, it's coming towards the end of the day here on uh, Wednesday, 2nd of July, 2014. I am about 100 yards or so away from the entrance of the Rathlin Energy well site here at uh, West Newton in East Yorkshire. It's been a very emotional day, particularly for some of the locals who have walked down the lane here and experienced the magnitude of what this industry means for them and it has shocked them. The sheer volume of the trucks, two convoys, something like 40 plus vehicles coming in, and the original plan submitted to the local authority, the traffic management plan, which uh, was approved, <clears throat> and it states specifically 
that uh, trucks leaving the site after deliveries must leave in single order, giving a 10 minute interval when departing the site. So here we are, day one, and that is one of a number of things that has been completely blown out of the water. And as I was explaining to the local community here, the reality is that these kind of documents that are submitted to the local authorities and presented to the local communities are just a smoke screen. It's smoke and mirrors. It's tell the community, tell the local authority what it is that you think they want to hear to be able to get your permissions to get onto the well site. Once you're on, they work on the principle that it's a lot easier to ask for forgiveness than it is to ask for permission. So today, obviously the infrastructure has uh, arrived at the well site. The uh, rig has yet to be erected. No doubt that'll be erected before dusk this evening. And as of tomorrow, then the fluids will start to be delivered to the site. So the reality is that the police presence has been nothing short of excessive. Probably something in the region of 20 plus police officers per protector. But that's because basically the protection community here it has been very small. Just a handful of people. It's a long way from anything. It's a long way from the nearest local store. It's very difficult to get a phone signal. It's nigh on impossible to do any uh, live streaming. But these hardy people have been here for the last uh, nearly uh, nine weeks now. And today they have um, seen this become a live site. The reality is that West Newton is the new front line in the fight against this abomination, this industry that is determined to effectively turn this country into an industrial wasteland. As we've seen many, many times before, the politicians are into cognitive dissonance, which is probably better than saying they're just outright lying, which uh, in some cases I believe that they actually are. Hopefully the local community will take the opportunity to come down Fosham Way here at West Newton and see for themselves. Once this operation starts and the drilling according to their plan will be 24-7, then the people who live in these farms some five, six hundred yards away will start to comprehend the magnitude of the impact on their beautiful ecology here. Gone will be the lack of light pollution, gone will be the lack of noise pollution. Well, for those of you who are watching this from a little bit further afield, take the opportunity, come down to West Newton, take a look for yourself, because this is what is coming to a location near you sometime very soon, unless we, the British people, come together and let the politicians and the investors, and the industry investors know that this will not be tolerated. There are some 300 days now before the next general election. It's not a long time, but uh, there is um, much work to do. So please come down to West Newton and take a look for yourself and also do your own research. Take a look at the legacy of this industry wherever it has unleashed this abomination around the globe. This is Ian R. Crane at West Newton around 5.30 in the afternoon on Wednesday, 2nd of July, 2014. Well, the media had a bit of a field day with it. First of all, the police actually prevented the press, the Hull Daily Mail and BBC Look North from coming down the road. So what is this all about? Humberside police preventing the press from observing what was occurring. It's not like there was any crime being committed. Not least because the police knew that there was literally a handful of protectors at the camp. So the papers the following day, particularly the Hull Daily Mail, had this to say, 100 officers, just three protesters. Well, of course, the, the fact that there weren't too many uh, protesters there, of course, backfired on the police because this was total overkill, as the headline here says. Police accused of overkill response to anti-fracking protest. Well, it is, of course, disappointing that there were only a handful. There might have been a little bit more than three. There were certainly two of us at the entrance and there was a few more up at the well site. 
But nonetheless, what it did indicate was that the corporation, Rathlin Energy, were concerned about the reaction, despite the campaign that they have been mounting to say, we're not fracking, we're not going to frack, we're just doing a, a mini frack fall off test as they call it. Well the local population are not falling for that but unfortunately at the moment the local population perhaps haven't realized that they have a massive role to play here because the perception that this industry is going to go ahead regardless is misplaced because there are certainly investors that are starting to get very concerned about the magnitude of the public reaction to this industry. It is not a done deal by any stretch of the imagination. Well, on the Friday, I was invited to give a talk at one of the uh, suburbs, the suburban villages around Beverly at a place called Cherry Burton at the St. Michael Centre there. Now, this was an event arranged by a local couple, uh, Ross Stanley and her partner Rob, and to a pretty much packed house, although it did include uh, some members from the protection community here at Crawberry Hill, which was wonderful because when it uh, when we took a break, it gave the local residents the opportunity to talk to the people that have come from all over the country to help protect this wonderful landscape here in the East Wolds of Yorkshire. Well, the following day, a March, a rally had been organised in Beverly by a Hull resident, Pippa Hockey. And that was extremely well attended with villages from all around Beverly represented. And the BBC gave, I have to say, a very balanced report on this event, speaking to members of the local communities and allowing them to express their concerns about this steam train that's coming down the tracks that they don't seem to be able to stop regardless of how much they engage in due process. So we can see here from um, some of these pictures here it uh, was uh, certainly well attended. There's the uh, wonderful uh, Jenny Ross uh, uh, born and raised in the Hull area now of course a resident of the Northwest and very familiar to those of you on the comedy club circuit in the northwest. Here, uh, obviously, on the right hand side, there we have somebody who's quite new to uh, these kind of rallies and uh, hasn't yet um, realized which way round the placard should be. And here's the wonderful people from Cherry Burton, where I was speaking the previous night, and the lady on the right there is uh, Ross Stanley, who organized that event and uh, actually spoke with the BBC while they were down at um, Beverly to cover the event. Here's perhaps my favourite banner from the rally. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Well, they're hiding behind the banner, so uh, let's have a look at the, uh, the faces behind that banner there. Here's a, a better picture from the group. There was about 150, I would say, there. Now, Beverly's not a big place, so actually the march was probably no more in total than about... Uh, uh, 500 meters or so, uh, literally a, a walk up the high street to the old town square, turn around and back again. It was all very peaceful, although we still had more police officers in attendance at the Beverly March than were uh, apparent at the rally in Manchester earlier this year where some 2,000 people attended. Needless to say, the good people of Beverly are not used to seeing such a, a gathering there. Now, at, after the rally, um, Pippa Hockey, who had organised the event, said a few words. So let's have a listen to uh, what Pippa had to say. It's just about educating people. It's about getting everyone around us to start talking about fracking and what it involves. But the, there's a few different things I want to say. I realise that oil and gas has been amazing for us, for our society, for, for many, many years. And I'm grateful for them. I think a lot of people are. But the fact is, we've got to change, we've got to, to change. MPs, write to your local councillors, write to the Prime Minister, inundate him, talk to the local press, tell the press that you don't want this, not just in your, in your backyard, but nationally, internationally, we cannot keep doing this, we cannot. 
talk to you. I think the most important thing is educating people. The only people I know that are pro-fracking, apart from the ones who work for the oil and gas companies and perhaps a few MPs who are getting money out of this, let's be fair, the only people that are pro are the ones that don't know what fracking is all about. Educate yourself. Please read about it. I didn't have an agenda when I started learning about fracking, but now I know so much about it and I know that we need to stop it. And we need to stop it for everyone. Tell your, your teachers, your pupils, your children, your parents, your grandparents, your neighbors, please tell everybody. Word of mouth is the most positive way of getting this message out there and we have to, have to educate people. And the most important thing is that we put on a united front. There's already fractures amongst groups and we don't need that. We need to be sticking together. You know, we need to be going supporting the protectors at the camps. No matter what you may think of people, they're kind, intelligent, courageous people. And they're brilliant. You know, the people that go, oh, I don't know about them. They have never even met these people. They're brilliant people. And they're, they're putting their lives and everything in the line to be there and stop and go up. It's not about going up and lying in front of lawyers and getting arrested. No one wants to get, to get arrested. It's about going and showing solidarity. Showing, get, taking up food, just being alongside them and helping them. And that, you know, in turn, they help us. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't even know exactly what was going on right now. And I think so many people are the same. We need to support each other and stick together. Solidarity. <laughs> Okay, well, next up was one of the founder members of Hull and East York's Frackoff, Richard Howarth, who's been extremely active over the past few months, giving many talks around the area, raising awareness amongst communities of what this industry means potentially for them. So let's have a listen to what Richard has to say. Good morning. Good morning. This is a remarkable event. There are so many people here, and this is only the start. This is the first march. There are people here who have never been on a political march in their lives. There are people getting involved who I thought I would never see involved in anything remotely political, but they realize this industry is coming not just to two wells. If this was about two wells, we wouldn't be here today. This is about thousands of wells. In the US, in the last five years, 100,000 wells, 20,000 in Canada, 5,000 in Queensland. And at the way we're going, we're looking at maybe 75,000 in the UK, several thousand across East Yorkshire. So this is a remarkable event. Give yourselves a huge cheer. <laughs> Everywhere this industry has gone, there has been poisoned water, there's been air pollution, there's been huge amounts of vehicles, lots of road accidents, toxic spills, there's been small earthquakes that have damaged well casings, there have been bigger earthquakes when they get rid of the wastewater down old wells. This industry has so many impacts and the oil and gas industry will get away with as much as it can until people say no, no more. And no that's more. what's happening today. No more! No more! No more! When people know what is involved in this industry, the overwhelming majority of people are opposed. The people who are here, uh, the people who have seen what this industry has done elsewhere, and are saying no. And as more people find out, the more people will be opposed. It is only a matter of time before this industry is banned in this country. Yeah. The only question is how long it will take and whether that will be before or after a major environmental catastrophe. Um, so yeah, carry on doing what you're doing, talk to people, inform people, let all the politicians know, but most of all, the thing that will ultimately stop this industry is enough people up at the camps stopping the vehicles coming in and going out. When there are lots of people up there, this industry cannot go ahead. It happened in Bentley, Australia, where they had a camp of 250 people and thousands of people turning up. They were about to send in 900 riot police to force down their own local community. We don't want to get to that stage. We want this banned, but if that's what it's take, that, that's what it'll take. Yeah. So once again, this is just the start. It may not be the last match. They only get bigger from here. Um, yeah, a huge round of applause to everyone who came. Yay! Well, next up 
was the wonderful Jenny Ross. Unfortunately, she has a problem with her vocal cords, and uh, it, it, she makes a real effort to speak. But unfortunately, the sound quality um, isn't good enough to uh, be able to play the video of her speech. And then finally, um, bringing up the rear, as it were, was uh, some guy called uh, Ian R. Crane. And um, so he uh, reluctantly took the stage, and uh, here's what he had to say. Bring on another muggy! <laughs> That's my boy. She's behind the... <laughs> I love hecklers. Give him a brochure. Make sure, actually, bring him on board. It's wonderful to see so many people here in the beautiful city of, uh, of Beverly. I am not very familiar with the uh, East Riding. Um, I'm, you can tell from my accent, I'm not from these parts. But you know, within 10 years, if this industry gets a foothold, you won't recognize the East Riding. It'll look like that picture there. There will be pads every few hundred yards on a grid. Eight pads per square mile. This is no transition fuel. They know that there is enough gas in the Boland Shale to keep this industry going for at least 30 years. At least 30 years. The fact that the gas is there is not in dispute. The reality is that we do not have a safe technology to exploit this resource. We need to look at what's been going on everywhere else in the world, and I mean everywhere where this abomination has been unleashed. It has resulted in the contamination of the water of the soil and of the air and has led to horrendous negative health impacts on those communities. This isn't hearsay. The evidence is there for everyone to see for themselves. And as the other speakers have said this morning, the critical element is to encourage people to look at this for themselves. I spent 20 years in the oilfield services industry. I know firsthand what this industry does. And the reality is they don't give a damn. The reason that the government and the industry think they can do this is because they think they can ride roughshod over the community, just like they have in Queensland. In the last five years, over five and a half thousand wells have been drilled in southern Queensland in an area the size of the UK. It has decimated southern Queensland. Bentley is just south of the border between Queensland and New South Wales, and the people of New South Wales have watched the devastation of Queensland and they've said it's not going to happen here. And that's why they had up to 10,000 people there some weekends and eventually the New South Wales government realised they had a problem. And they prevented, in fact they withdrew Met Gasco's licence on the grounds that they obviously hadn't consulted appropriately with the community. Consultation here is a joke. It's a box ticking exercise. At Balkan, last uh, two years ago, Quadrilla held a public meeting. The room was packed. There was 400 people in the meeting and the, eventually the Quadrilla uh, chief executive lost his job over that meeting. But on the Quadrilla website the following day, it said, public meeting held at Borkham, nothing significant to report. It's a box ticking exercise. It, the problem we have in this country right now is that all the major parties, with the exception of the Green Party and Plaid Cymru, and I don't think Plaid Cymru will be putting an MP up in uh, no. Beverly, no. <laughs> all the other parties right now are pro-fracking. Yes. We have less than 300 days to get a change in the political landscape, because otherwise on May the 8th next year, whomever walks into number 10 is going to claim that they got elected on a manifesto that included the exploitation of unconventional hydrocarbons. This has to be changed. The Labour Party need to do two things to absolutely guarantee that they are in office next year. The first, of course, is to review the leadership <laughs> He's doing the training course. Okay. The second is that if the Labour Party comes out and goes absolutely anti-fracking, then I believe that they actually will be almost a shoe in And of course, if they do actually change the leadership, it will be absolutely guaranteed. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, West Newton is the front line in this country on the fracking campaign. 
Did anybody see the Look North footage or uh, the YouTube footage of the trucks rolling in? Yes. Yeah. That is what is coming to pretty much every community in the East Wolds if this goes ahead. Yeah, I can interpret the rattling jargon and you know, Rathlin say we're not going to frack, we're doing a mini fall-off test. The reality is the Rathlin have no intention of doing anything more than establishing the magnitude of the resources here and then they will sell to somebody else like Digas, Dart Energy and Digas, and they will come and frack it. So the people, the people of East Wolds and from further afield will be converging on West Newton, and while still, of course, protecting Crawberry Hill, but they will be converging on West Newton to let the politicians know that there is no social licence and to let the investors know that basically they might as well throw their money down a black hole. Yeah. You know, this, is, this is a very, very exciting time because there has never been an issue like this. Probably the closest there's ever been to this in British politics is perhaps poll tax. But this issue is uniting people from right across the social, the political, the philosophical and the religious spectrum. You know, we may not agree on very much else, but the one thing that we do all agree on is that this abomination has no place in this densely populated country. Labour Party did one of two things, i.e. removed the leader, dear old Ed, nice chap, Ed, but uh, not really uh, Prime Minister material, as many in his own party acknowledge. So, bit of self-reflection, Ed. You've had your five minutes of fame. Now do the right thing and bow out and allow somebody who can lead the Labour Party to victory to step in. Now, I don't think you're really going to do that, and you're certainly not going to listen to me anyway. But there is one other thing that you can do. As the media are trying to point out that, um, in fact, immigration is perhaps something that will help you get the majority that you, you look at. But there are perhaps a number of other aspects. But you'll notice that even immigration may only bring you 45%. Well, there is something that might bring you 70% plus and that is to announce that the Labour Party is anti-fracking. So how about emulating the campaigning of uh, David Cameron a few years ago where he said that he would bring about the greenest party ever. Of course, as we all know, uh, you can always tell when a politician is lying because actually their lips are moving. Well, you have an opportunity here perhaps to take over that mantle. But this time, if you do this, your feet will be held to the proverbial fire. But in addition to announcing that you're going to bring about the greenest government ever, you also need to announce that the Labour Party is anti-fracking. And watch the movement in the polls. Every community where a poll is taken is at least 70% against. So that's a hell of a swing you're looking at, Ed. So unfortunately, I don't think you're likely to stand down. So give yourself a chance, pal. Go anti-fracking, learn the facts, educate yourself. The facts are out there. And then take your party into number 10. Well, your um, representative in Beverly, uh, George McManus, who was very kind enough to allow us to uh, join him a couple of weeks ago, where uh, he was um, holding a poll in Beverly to get a sense of the strength of feeling within the community. And we were uh, helping him there by flyering and talking to uh, Beverly residents. And uh, for those of you who watched that uh, edition of uh, Fracking Nightmare, uh, the poll turned out to be 72% against fracking. 72%. Well, George... Uh, reciprocated and uh, tagged along on the back of the uh, rally on Saturday and there you see him holding his placard our land is not for shale good on you George and as many many uh, Hull residents acknowledged after watching the video where I interviewed George and sitting MP for Hull East Carl Turner George you'd make a far better MP than your buddy so there's a vote of confidence for you from the viewers of Fracking Nightmare. Now, meanwhile, 
Another uh, article that appeared in the good old sun, the Murdoch Press, new backing for fracking. Now this is the most outrageous piece of diatribe, but um, actually when you see who uh, it's attributed to, you'll understand why. The statement here is the shale gas revolution has reduced global emissions more than all the well-intentioned solar and wind. Bull biscuits. That is just absolute junk. But not really surprising because it comes from Chris Faulkner, president of US firm Breitling Energy. Now, Chris, I'm actually beginning to wonder whether you're actually allowed to return to the US because you seem to be spending a lot of time outside the US promoting shale gas. Now, you're a resident of the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and I bet you conveniently forget to mention that fracking is now banned within the city limits of Dallas-Fort Worth. I'm sure that probably slips your mind when you're banging out your bull biscuit material as you trot around the globe. Well, this is the guy who calls himself on Twitter the Frack Master. Well, you're certainly a mother fracker, Chris, that's for sure. And any time that you want to enter into public debate, my number's on the website. Give me a call. Well, that was um, the, uh, the Beverly Rally that I just talked about. After the rally, we took a trip down to the West Newton Well site and we encouraged people that had participated in the rally to come and take a look and meet the people that were down there camping outside the gate. Well, they were certainly observed. This is the uh, Rathlin security. And as you'll see, it um, is another version of Stalag Luft 13. Of course, the iGas uh, well site. Uh, many of you who have watched my programs over the past few months will be familiar with the Barton Moss iGas well site. Well, they don't have the solid green fence here at Barton, uh, at, uh, at Barton Moss. Well, blast from the past at West Newton. What they do have on two sides is a massive earthen berm, which provides the perfect lookout spot for the security personnel. And as you can see there, there is no sexism in Beacon Security. Now, Beacon Security, which is a Burgess Hill firm run by Matthew and uh, Natalie uh, Robinson, I believe it is, and uh, they, they were engaged after the local firm, 24-7, uh, unfortunately slipped up and allowed the uh, protectors to build the castle at Crawberry Hill. Obviously, the local uh, company was not uh, cutting the mustard, so uh, Beacon Security were brought in. And we have it on very good authority that um, uh, Mr. Montague Smith, uh, actually instructed or had someone in his organization instruct Beacon that their task was to do whatever it takes to get rid of the protectors. Well have we got news for you Monty, there ain't a chance in hell. The protection community ain't going anywhere and um, who knows, um, maybe there's more antics yet to come. Meanwhile I'm not too sure what it is that you're worried about but uh, um, the razor wire, of course, has been added this week. The second layer of fencing, as you can see here, we have the outer fencing with the barbed wire on top, then the, the drainage ditch, which of course is acting as the moat, and then the uh, razor wire on top of the Harris fencing. And around the far side, uh, motion sensors and uh, radio transmitters to relay the information back to the security hut. It really, I mean, who would really want to work on the inside of this? It's absolutely remarkable. This is what it has come to in the corporatocracy, formerly known as Great Britain. And what is this wire for? Well, it's for this handful of peaceful protectors that uh, came down to uh, enjoy a cup of tea and some cakes made by the locals. And I can absolutely and categorically assure you, Monty, that the locals, with the exception of the landowner, who you greased the palm with about 300,000, wasn't it? Well, his new silos cost about 280, so I'm guessing he kept about 20k for a holiday. But, uh, you know, you greased the palm and you've done what this industry has done throughout the rest of the world. Divided the community. 
everywhere where this industry rolls into town it creates division in that community well it certainly seems to be that the community of West Newton and the surrounding villages are basically almost 100% anti Rathlin Energy the only one pro is the landowner who's taken the buckshish. And what are they protecting? Well, this is the workover rig that is on site there at the moment. And yet if I swing my camera around 90 degrees, this is the site over there. Now, I will acknowledge that I have a personal bias. I hate these windmills with a vengeance. I think they are ugly. I think they spoil the serenity of the landscape. But given the choice between these and a frac site, it's an absolute no-brainer. And I'll take the wind farms any day of the week. Of course, I'll take solar farms before I take the wind farms. Either way, we definitely do not need the fracking industry in this country. Meanwhile, I'm pleased to say that it would seem that uh, we're already having some impact on the local constabulary because of course one of the things that we advise the constabulary at every given opportunity is not only to look at this for themselves but if they are local and they own a property to consider what this industry is going to impact upon their property ownership because everywhere in the world where this industry rolls into town the property prices absolutely tank in the village of uh, New Ellersby. Here's um, one of the uh, Humberside Constabulary. I'm guessing by the van that he's a dog handler. Pretty astute, huh? Well, he's obviously got his house up for sale and he's obviously been having a few words with his neighbor because theirs is up for sale as well. But if their experience is anything like the uh, resident of the cottage at the bottom of Foshin Way, she was advised by uh, her estate agents to drop the value of her property by some 20% if she wanted to get a sale. And the reason that they gave for that um, advice was because of the Rathbun Energy well site at the top of the lane adjacent to her property. Of course, she was uh, subsequently visited by a couple of people from Rathbun Energy. And, and of course those um, representatives of Rathlin made it quite clear that they didn't believe that they were in any way responsible for the fall in her property value. Well of course they would say that wouldn't they? Well meanwhile over at um, Crawberry Hill a couple of nights ago we had this beautiful view this uh, double rainbow and as you can see the end of the rainbow was pointing right at the sign say no to fracking or was it under the hat there being worn by the uh, amazing member of the protection community, Silver Fox. Well, I checked under his hat and there was certainly no pot of gold there. And uh, unfortunately, um, I didn't even find one behind the say no to fracking banner. But um, nonetheless, it was a beautiful scene there. See that uh, double rainbow after uh, a pretty heavy downpour. And of course, unfortunately, at VOD are still um, haranguing UK column to register with them so that Atvod can regulate which of course is censor so meanwhile we are in the process of uploading all the past episodes of Fracking Nightmare to the Ian R. Crane YouTube channel when you find these episodes there please feel free to copy them for yourself and put them around wherever you feel appropriate we need to let Atvod know that the alternative media will not be subjected to regulation. There are ways around their outrageous censorship and we will do whatever it takes to ensure that the alternative media remains the true free press. Well, a couple of events coming up uh, for the, any of you over in the Northwest. Uh, Dear friends at iGas are about to trot out their usual palliatives at a meeting at the Holiday Inn in Ellesmere Port where they will be uh, sharing information with the residents of the Wirral and North Cheshire about their future plans to drill. And of course they won't be fracking, they won't be targeting the shale, they will only be looking at the coal bed methane in the coal measures. The fact that they'll be drilling 
another five and a half thousand feet below the coal measures is purely out of interest to see what's there. Well, I guess, you know, we know what you're really doing. We know what the real target is. And by the way, of course, I guess Andrew Austin and co have every intention of becoming the major players in the unconventional gas industry in the UK. Having acquired Dart Energy, they haven't yet made the formal announcement that they are changing their name to Digas. How very appropriate. So that's the Holiday Inn. It's a drop-in meeting this coming Thursday. And uh, please go along, ask the questions um, between 3 o'clock in the afternoon and 8 o'clock in the evening. And one of the key questions to ask them is ask them what their thoughts are on the fact that this industry has contaminated the water, the soil and the air wherever it has unleashed this abomination. And how come it's going to be any different in the UK? Well, of course it isn't. We know that. And uh, they will, of course, descend into cognitive dissonance or they will outright lie. Take your pick. Um, meanwhile, a couple of uh, another upcoming event that I'd ask you to uh, put into your your um, diary, and that is that uh, from the 14th of August, which is a Thursday, until Wednesday the 20th, the following week, uh, there is going to be an anti-fracking action camp. Now, this is being organised by the group known as Reclaim the Power, who did an absolutely amazing job at Balkham last year. In fact, their presence at Balkham was absolutely instrumental in Quadrilla running out of time and not being able to complete its frack before they had to vacate the site on September the 28th. So this is um, a wonderful opportunity to meet with like-minded people, to talk about what's going on and what you anticipate will be going on in your area. Remember, 62% of this country sits above unconventional gas deposits and the socio-psychopaths who think that they are running this country, although of course they're being rumbled in so many ways right now, but I'm not going to go there tonight. So it's a time to come together and uh, have a direct impact on an industry that is intent on poisoning this nation's water. And uh, of course, um, actually the British uh, Geological Society issued a report um, last week. And in that report, we look at the comparisons here between the shale deposits and the major aquifers. And one of the key issues should certainly be the uh, oolite aquifer that runs right down from uh, North Yorkshire, right down into the Midlands, right around the coal seams there. And uh, we, which is exactly where die gas uh, intend to do a lot of drilling uh, in the uh, not too distant future. So watch this space. And uh, here's from the ecologist, you know, fracking 95% of oil and gas shales underlie drinking water aquifers. A study by the British Geological Survey and the Environment Agency reveals that almost all the oil and gas bearing shales in England and Wales underlie drinking water aquifers, raising fears that widespread water contamination could occur. The bottom line here is if there is any possibility whatsoever, and unfortunately of course it's not just a possibility, it's a probability, then there is no way that this industry should ever be allowed to get its bits in the ground. Well. If you are around uh, Beverly this coming weekend, um, it looks like there's going to be some kind of major political event here. Um, not too sure who's actually appearing, but uh, you know, take your pick because there's uh, some 630 or so to, uh, to choose from. Um, meanwhile, for the people of East Yorkshire who have concerns about a camp appearing within their community. I'd like to close this evening's episode with um, a extract of the speech given by Charles Metcalf at the end of the Borkham campaign last year. Now Charles, I believe his profession is that he's a wine critic. Um, he's a, a wonderful, wonderful man. He uh, was central to the Borkham community in their fight against Quadrilla and in fact he is a big part of the uh, group that is raising a legal challenge against West Sussex County Council 
as West Sussex County Council granted Quadrilla planning permission to return to the site in Morecambe, despite the fact that there was 899 objections and only nine letters received in favour. So the claim is that West Sussex County Council acted unlawfully by ignoring the 899 objections. So full credit to Charles and um, Sue Taylor and the other members of the group that are raising this legal challenge and I wish you well. We have to look at all possible avenues to try to bring this industry to an end in this country. Conventional oil and gas, no issue. I have absolutely no qualms. I am not anti-hydrocarbons per se. I am anti-unconventional hydrocarbons because the reality is that we do not have a safe technology to extract it. Charles recognised the importance of the role of the camp. He recognised the significance of people coming from all over the country in support of the Balkan community. And despite initial concerns amongst the Balkan community, the vast majority of those concerns were completely dispelled as the campaign wore on. So this is Charles Metcalf at the end of the Balkan campaign last September. I live in Balkan. I can see lots of neighbours here who also live in Balkan, as well as friends from the protectors camp. We are so glad, most of us, that these folk have been here for really quite a long time now, swelled at weekends, occasionally going off to find somewhere else slightly more comfortable, slightly drier, um, but returning and still looking after us. Because we have half a mile south of our village a company that it rather slipped through the regulations because no one really knew what they were going to do when they applied to do it. The fact is that they have permission to do what they have said they want to do but most of us do not want them to do this. We've been resisting by every means we can think of. Our friends here at the camp have also been resisting. We've seen it in the States. They keep on telling us here that fracking has been going on for decades. That's true, but not this kind of fracking. This kind of fracking, high pressure, horizontal, slick water fracturing, was first done in 2002. And by my measuring, that is not decades. It has happened once so far in this country and that was up in Lancashire at a place called Priest Hall where Quadrilla, the same people that want to ravage our little bit of Sussex they drilled a well, they fracked it they screwed up they caused an earthquake, they caused two earthquakes actually and one of those earthquakes ruptured the casing of the well deformed it and still they went on fracking with all the dangers but really not knowing anything of where their chemicals that they were pumping underground, where the stuff coming up from underground was going to go. They went on drilling for two months. They weren't fracking for two months. And they didn't tell anyone, they didn't tell the authorities for six months. Not only are Quadrilla incompetent, but they're also shifty, sneaky, dishonest. I say dishonest, I say dishonest because they put out a pamphlet in Lancashire which was censured by the Advertising Standards Authority because of six counts on which they had not told the truth. They had tried to reassure the people of Lancashire that this method of fracking, this new method of fracking was safe was proven and was not going to cause any problems. This was just simply a pack of lies. Do we really want to have a company with this short and extremely undistinguished record drilling here on the edge of our village? No! 
I think the answer is a resounding no. All they need is for one company to be successful and they'll all be doing it. I want to spread any kind of help that we can offer from our experience here in Balkan to all those other communities in the UK, frankly, in the world. Because this is a nasty way of wrenching the last drops and hisses of fossil fuels out of the ground. It's something that should not permit it, be permitted. It is too dangerous. It's too dangerous on the emissions from the flares. It's too dangerous in its threatening of the water supply. It is just too dangerous for our health, for our environment, for our water. And the last drops of fossil fuel are much, much less precious than our water. Without water, we cannot survive. So, thanks again to our campers here who've steadfastly stood by us for months now. We needed their help. They've given it. 106 people I learned from the um, chief constable watching his video that he made with the police and crime commissioner the other day have been arrested. Nobody has yet come up in court, including young Simon here, um, arrested for singing. Tut, tut, tut. Must have been out of tune. Um, but, you know, I do hope, it's said that they're, they're all going to come into court on October the 2nd in Crawley, in the magistrate's court there. It'll be very interesting to see what happens. So far, the judiciary has given us two thumbs up. They have, A, said that the bail conditions imposed by the police to stop people coming back here and protesting were a violation of people's fundamental human rights to protest. And then, in the High Court in London, was it last week? It seems like months ago, but it was probably not long ago. Monday. In the High Court on Monday, the judge there said that the application by West Sussex County Council to have the camp evicted was, quote, deeply flawed, unquote, and adjourned it until October the 8th, i.e. left the camp in place for the time that the camp needs to be in place for until we fervently hope Quadrilla has gone. I would like to see Quadrilla disappear up a hole in its fundament. But unfortunately, I fear, I fear that they're going to pop up somewhere else like a nasty rash and terrify some other community. And I think when that happens, we should be ready. We should be ready to help that community as other communities have helped us. Yes. Folks, thank you very much.